In the bustling streets of Goinea, Brazil, Tiago Gomes de Rocha, was once just an ordinary face in the crowd, a nameless figure navigating life's complexities. Little did anyone know that this handsome but unassuming man, plagued by deep-seated insecurities and a simmering hatred for the world, would go on to become a symbol of terror and violence. In today's video, we will tell you the story of how this seemingly ordinary man's inner demons transformed him into a notorious criminal, leaving a trail of fear and devastation in his wake, and who is now known as one of the most prolific serial killers in Brazil's recent memory. Born on February 4, 1987, in Goiânia, Brazil, a city of 1.3 million people, located in the center of the country, Tiago Henrique Gomes da Rocha grew up in a troubled family environment. His father abandoned the family before he was born, and since his mother struggled to provide for da Rocha and his siblings, they lived with his grandparents. Not much is known about the early years of da Rocha's life, but the lack of a stable family structure and support likely had a significant impact on his upbringing. At the age of 11, da Rocha was molested by a neighbor. About this, he later stated to a journalist from The Sun, I had an ordinary childhood until I was 11. Then I was sexually abused by a neighbor. After that, I felt like I was nothing. These facts, he said, would have provoked a strong feeling of anger in him. From that moment on, da Rocha displayed signs of behavioral problems. At school, he was bullied, and he frequently engaged in petty crimes. As da Rocha entered adolescence, his rage would grow with him. Although his family described him as a quiet young man with few friends who rarely went out to social events at night, his delinquent behavior escalated, and he became more deeply involved in criminal activities. When da Rocha graduated from high school, he worked for a couple of years at a private security firm. Da Rocha later stated to the police, I felt the anger growing in me, and I'd started drinking a lot too. When I reached adulthood, it peaked. When I was 22, I couldn't stop myself anymore. It was like I had to do it. It was also then that he stole a 38 caliber gun from his workplace. In 2011, 16-year-old Diego Martins Mendes left his parents' house to sign up for military school. A few hours later, he called his mother from the bus terminal and said he was heading home. This was the last time she spoke to her son. A few moments later, da Rocha approached Diego under the assumption that he was gay and convinced him to go to an overgrowth for sex. The act was never consummated, according to da Rocha, but there Diego was strangled. Until today, his body has never been found. The next two victims were also men described by da Rocha as homosexuals. The subsequent targets were prostitutes and homeless people. Nobody would care about them, he stated. Da Rocha had a specific pattern for his killings, Prostitutes were stabbed, homeless people were shot to death, and homosexuals were strangled. Young women, the victims he came to savor killing the most, he would shoot in the chest. In early 2014, da Rocha turned his attention to young women. On January 18th, 14-year-old Barbara Costa, who had been waiting for her grandmother in a public square in Goiania, was shot dead by da Rocha, who rode by on a motorcycle. From then on, he began a killing spree that would last up to seven months. A series of brutal attacks only against women, most of them young. Just a day after killing Costa, it was the turn of 23-year-old Beatriz Mora, who was also shot in the chest by da Rocha, while riding by on his motorcycle with stolen license plates. His modus operandi was always to shout robbery before pulling the trigger, but he would flee the scene without taking anything. On February 3rd, 3rd, he killed 28-year-old Lilian Mesquita, and two weeks later, it was 26-year-old Ana Maria Duarte. Before August of that same year, da Rocha killed 15 women in this way. As the body count continued to rise, the Goiania police initiated a massive investigation to apprehend the serial killer. Investigators meticulously analyzed the crime scenes to gather evidence and clues that could lead to the identification of the killer. Ballistics experts examined the firearms used in the killings, and forensic analysts studied the physical evidence left behind. As the investigation progressed, 
Detectives began to notice patterns in the killings. They identified common elements in the crime, such as the locations, times, and methods used by the killer. This helped them narrow down their search for a suspect. The Goya Civil Police also obtained several images of DeRosha, captured by security cameras moments later and close to the crime scenes. The police were looking for a tall man, approximately 1.7 tall, white with an athletic build, who was driving a black motorbike and wearing a black helmet. One crucial breakthrough came when DeRocha left a murder weapon behind at one of the crime scenes. This weapon became a critical piece of evidence that would eventually lead the police to him. On October 14th, DeRocha was arrested after being pulled over in the city of Goiania while riding his motorcycle with fake license plates. Once in custody, DeRocha, 26 years of age at the time, confessed to the gruesome murders of 39 individuals and the attempted murders of two others. While speaking to the police, they were shocked by his coldness, as he would refer to his victims only as numbers. He told the police that he was motivated by the urge to kill and that he was angry with the world. He claimed the sexual abuse at the age of 11 started his anger, which was later fueled by the many rejections from women he'd pursued romantically. In a way, I'm a victim here too, he stated. In a sick twist, it was revealed that Darocha had a girlfriend at the time of his killing spree, a pretty church girl with long hair. Her appearance, similar to that of his victims, who would often take him to her Assembly of God Church. Two days after his arrest, Darocha attempted suicide in his prison cell by slashing his wrists with a smashed light bulb, but was stopped by a guard. He also reportedly called the wardens and told them he was in the mood to kill. He asked the agents if he would answer criminally if he were to kill one of the other inmates. Darocha was evaluated by two psychiatrists from the medical board of the Court of Justice of the state of Goyas. In this official assessment, Darocha was diagnosed as a psychopath but considered imputable. The trial of Darocha in 2016 was a significant legal proceeding, as he was one of Brazil's most prolific serial killers. Given the severity of his crimes and the number of victims involved, he was sentenced to a total of 639 years in prison, where he still remains today. Darocha's story underscores the importance of early intervention and support for troubled individuals. The molestation by his neighbor and his descent into violence serve as a stark reminder of the need for proactive measures to prevent such tragedies from occurring in the future. If you thought this video was interesting, then share your thoughts on it in the comments. And please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more stories about serial killers worldwide. Until next time, and stay safe.